Hi, and welcome to Bob Ackman Sports, America's number one top sports handicapper since 1978. This is the first of two parts of our hockey betting tips video. In this first part, we'll talk about why hockey is an absolutely great betting sport. We'll compare the hockey goalie to the starting pitchers of decades ago, and we'll explore the range of hockey betting lines. I'll leave these headphones where they are instead of putting them on. If I do that, I'll look just like Nancy at Time Life Books taking your phone order. Thanks for visiting our website, basports.com, to see what Bob Ackman Sports is all about. Over the many years I've run a sports service, people have often asked me, what is the best sport to bet? Pound for pound, probably the sport you can make the most money betting is hockey certainly of the American sports. This surprises many folks, so let's talk about why I think this is true. First, like baseball, you don't need to cover a spread as you would in football or in hoops. These days, lines on almost all hockey sides are presented in the form of odds, not point spreads. The great advantage to that is that you just have to win the game to win your bet. Of course, that's a double-edged sword in both bases and on the ice. For most amateur bettors, it's not that simple to pick a team that just has to win. If it were, the bookies would get cleaned out by baseball and hockey bettors all the time, and they obviously don't. It may look deceptively easy, but it can be a minefield loaded with teams that look like locks but end up shocking you and lose the game. But if your procedure for picking those winners is sound, or you have a sound source for getting those winners, you'll find that the hockey teams tend to be even more formful than, say, betting on a given baseball starter. That's because that baseball starter, now let's imagine he's a $1.50 favorite, can shut out his opponent for six or seven innings, have a brilliant start, and then the bullpen fouls everything up and blows the game. But a hockey team that you might pick that's also a $1.50 favorite is priced as a team, usually with the same goalie in net for the entire game. And if you think about it, the hockey goalie is actually aiming for a shutout, unlike today's baseball starters who virtually never get shutouts anymore because they virtually never pitch nine innings anymore. So, in the National Hockey League, you tend not to get what happens to every great pitcher numerous times a baseball season. A magnificent start ruined by a crappy bullpen. There is also the reality that hockey is basically a low scoring game with a much narrower range of final scores than happens in baseball games. A 10 nothing baseball final is really no shock to anyone. I've never even heard of a 10 nothing National Hockey League game, though there probably have happened. This also means that the lines on over-unders, totals, in hockey are much lower, and again in a much, much narrower range, not only than in just baseball, but in any other American sport. By far, the most prevalent hockey totals lines will be five goals, five and a half goals, or six goals. That's a one-goal range from top to bottom. You just rarely see anything out of that incredibly tight range. Rarely a four and a half, equally rarely a six and a half. And the beauty of that slim range of lines is that it happens because there's a perceptual bias that hockey bettors apparently have, which is very often unfounded in any given game. And that is that almost all hockey games are supposed to be low scoring. Here's what I mean. Let's assume, and I'm making this example up, the Vancouver Canucks are playing at the Chicago Blackhawks. And let's further assume that, say, the last ten times they played in Chicago, the average or the total number of goals scored in those ten games was 72. So the average amount of goals scored in each of those games was 7.2. Well, the line makers are not going to put up a total which reflects the recent reality of that matchup. That is a line of seven or seven and a half. Why? 
Well, here's a truth you should imprint on your brain because the purpose of betting lines and point spreads is not to tell you who's better by how much. The purpose of all betting lines is just one thing to try to equally split the betting dollars so that roughly the same amount is bet on each side. Never forget that fact when you look at any line and you say to yourself, this line's out of whack. No, it isn't. Either team may win or lose by a wide margin from that line, but the line itself was not bad because it was designed to split the betting action only. That was its purpose. The line makers are far from fools. Because the line maker cannot put up a seven and a half goal line, virtually everyone would end up betting the under on a line like that, and no bookmaker would be happy with taking on that much needless risk in one game. The totals line in a game like that would probably be posted at the high end of that one goal range I've spoken of. Six goals. And if you've done your homework, and I assure you that to do so you'd have to look at more than just this solitary stat of average scoring and your figures support that decision you might be wise to play the over in a game like that now on that note we'll close out part one of this video please watch part two where I'll tell you about hockey overtimes and shootouts I'll tell you about the first ever handicapping contest for sports services for hockey and I'll tell you about a feat of superhuman proportions, winning five straight hockey contests. Thanks for your time, and make sure you watch part two of this video, which, if you follow its advice, will make you money. For the time being, Bob Ackman's signing out for now. Thanks for visiting.